It's so big and no one knows what could happen and it's kind of like adventurous. All the astronauts are so brave to go up there because I'd never do that. <laughs> When you learn about it, it's really fascinating because of all the planets and the stars and the moon and everything. At Ponsbourne St Mary's Primary School in Hertfordshire, the combined Year 5 and 6 class has been investigating the exciting and challenging topic of the Earth in space. We learn about night and day and like and how night and day like comes and everything, like by the Earth spinning on its axis. I want to make teaching exciting and alive and make learning fun for the children. That's why I decided to become a teacher. Today, the class has come to the University of Hertfordshire's Science Learning Centre, east of England, to further their scientific skills. Some of the children have already made a thrilling nighttime visit to the observatory here. When you're teaching, you have to show science as an exciting subject where you're always learning new things. And the fact that it's in the news also helps. New things coming up and the children can come into the classroom and tell you about it. And rather than just to say, yes, that's interesting, but we're doing this now, to develop what they know and to research it as a class and build on that excitement and make things as practical and as fun as possible for them. Deputy Director of the Centre, Jane Turner, will be supervising today's visit. Right. There's lots of ways that, that you can find out things today. Now, can you see this grid here? I want you to go away in pairs and fill this in for me. It says things I know about night and day. Then things you want to know, things that you'd really like to know about before you go home today, that you think you might be able to find out because you've come to our science centre here, where we've got an astronomer and a planetarium and telescopes and lots of things for, to help you find out. So we need to think, like scientists, how do we find out? What is it we want to know? And how will we find out? And how will we know we found it out? First stop, the planetarium. And on hand is resident astronomer Bob Forrest. This is the most exciting place there is because in this room here, we can control time and show you the whole of the solar system and everything that's out there in the galaxy. So what do we need to go and explore space? <laughs> we need a spaceship, yeah, a rocket. So everybody, seatbelts on, helmets on, pack an awful lot of sandwiches, I reckon, and off we'll go to Neptune. A very long way. Here we go. Whoa! Right, Neptune. It's a huge gas planet, so I have no idea what it'll be like when we land on Neptune. What do you all notice about Neptune? What can you see? Those white things, they're like storms or something. You're just right. There are big clouds and storm systems in the atmosphere of Neptune, just the same way that we have clouds and storms on Earth. But Neptune is much bigger than the Earth, so all the storms are bigger. I would never go up in a rocket as an astronaut or anything, but then I don't have to, I can just stay in there and watch. The work we've already done in the classroom gives the children a basis um, for what they're going to be looking at today. Looking into uh, how the day and night occur by watching the sun's movement across the sky. We talk about the sun coming up. Is the sun really coming up? My so why does it look like the sun is coming up? Because the earth spins that way and the sun just stays still, so it looks like the sun is moving downwards. So well done. If I turn the sun off, what will we see? If I can turn the sun out, what's in the sky? What's in the sky all the time? Stars. Stars and moon. And the moon and planets. And here they are. Turn the sun down. And look. There they are. Now, if we went outdoors, when we go outside at lunchtime, that's all there. Why can't we see all of these things? Because, because like, the stars are bright, but you can't see them because um, the sun's shining. But at night, it's not, so they have, like, sort of, they can shine because it's all dark. Yeah. When we're facing the sun, its light is so bright that there's no darkness. As soon as we're away from the sun and there's darkness, then we can see other stars in our galaxy and in other galaxies. And isn't that quite exciting, really, to think that tomorrow, when you're playing football or going shopping and it's a sunny day, all those stars are there. It was really cool because you could see, like, all the stars really up close and all the planets. 
because you can almost see colours in them now, like purples and blues. So do you know the difference between a solar and a lunar eclipse? The children are encouraged to set themselves questions to investigate. By taking them out of the classroom to a resource like this, Adrienne can extend their knowledge and interest. As I'm quite new to teaching, I think it's great to have the experience of the centre to rely on, to so answer some of the children's questions in more depth and to give the support to me as a new teacher. That sounds like, to me like something we need to clear up, really, make so we're absolutely sure. So it would be really good if we could fill that box in at the end of the day. And why do you think we use this instead of looking directly at the sun to try and see what's Cause, there? Because if we look at the sun, it could blind us. Bob, the astronomer, is encouraging the children to be hands-on with equipment like solar scopes. Is this how it works? <laughs> the sunlight, I use this as the sunlight. It hits that mirror, then it hits that mirror, then it goes up there, Hits that mirror, and then it goes back down, and then you can see the sunlight on that. Yeah, it's very good. It shows. It just just works just like that. At the end of the visit, the children yeah, meet back in the planetarium to, to share their findings. What was it you were looking for? The North Star. The North Star. The North Star. Now are you confident now that you can show the rest of us where the North Star is? Yeah. yeah. And describe how you worked out how to find it. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Well, I'm going to hand over to you then. Yeah. We looked at the map and where the North Star is star is and we looked at Polaris and then Fred's going to show you on the screen where it is. That's brilliant, well done. That's really clever stuff. So you use the map and you looked at the map and then you've made it happen on the planetarium and now you've been able to show all your friends. Okay, so let's find out about the research that some others of you have been doing. Any other planets that people know about that we should visit while we're in the planetarium? Harry? Saturn. Saturn. Can you see it? Where is it in the sky at the moment? Oh, right down there. OK, spaceship ready. Anything we need to know before we get to Saturn? What's it going to be like? The temperature is going to be uh, minus 180 degrees. Oh, my goodness. That sounds a bit cold, doesn't it? So it's a massive planet. Huge, isn't it? So does that mean it's a really heavy, solid planet? No. What's it like, then? It's light. Light. Well, do you know what I read somewhere, and I thought this must be a joke, because it's such a big planet. It said that Saturn was so light it could float in a bath. Is that true? Yeah. So you, you, I'm right, am I? Can you imagine how big the bath would have to be to float Saturn in it? <laughs> no, I can't either. OK, so that's the end of your day at the Science Learning Centre. I hope you've had a good time. I hope you'll come back again in the night and we'll have another observatory trip. And I hope that next time you need to know something about space, you'll know where to come. Right, should we ever sit down and think about how the day went? Yeah, let's have a look at the knowledge grids and what they wrote to start with. OK. I started off with this because, obviously, not having been in your lessons previously, I needed to know where to pitch it. There's nothing worse than giving them stuff they already yeah. know. And these were quite interesting, really, because they're very clear on the stuff that is sort of national curriculum stuff, really. The moon gets its light from the sun, reflects mm. the light, you get that night and day by the Earth spinning. I was quite surprised at the fact that when they were first had to think about the things they already know about night and day, they were quite hesitant. Mm. They didn't realise what they already knew. Yeah. So although they knew a lot if you talked to them about it, they didn't think, oh, what do I know, and to write it down. And that's what's good about this sort of strategy, really, because it's asking them what they know, not trying to find out what they don't know. Mm. So it, well, you hope it's going to build some sort of self-esteem and make them feel good about themselves right at the start. I know all this stuff. Yeah. Now I feel confident that I can find out some more. And the questions are really interesting that they've come up with because, and I think this is one of the limitations of this part of the schemes of work, is actually the things they're interested in aren't mm. the stuff that is in the scheme of work. So um, how far apart are the planets? This is presumably one for Bob. Have you ever discovered a new planet? How hot is the sun? So children always want to know more, not yeah. just the basic yeah. facts. And is that why you came here, really? Yeah, definitely. Because I didn't have all the answers, and I could only, I only know what to teach them through the national yeah. curriculum, really. I don't know how to extend their learning right. and answer some of the questions that they come up with. And this topic is the one where you can't experiment, particularly. Yeah, You're going to have to rely on secondary resources. You're going to have to investigate models rather than the real thing. Mm -hmm. And it's a hard thing to do, and hopefully coming here enables you to do that in a, in a bigger and more meaningful way. 
The children were really excited about going to the observatory. They were so excited and to see stars for themselves. Yeah. A couple of them had telescopes before, but had seen nothing like what they saw there. Just really cool. <laughs> I think they found it quite magical, really. Yeah, it is. I think it's quite magical. I think, and, and what, I mean, this is a classic. We want awe and wonder, don't we? We want children excited. And by bringing them here last night, seeing all that, the planetarium today is a wow, but also something they learned to do themselves. So becoming, it's not something that's done to them, it's something they take part in, and that's really crucial. Those boys explaining how they found the North Star, moving from a, a map of the sky to the planetarium to be able to show their friends, is, that's how it should be. Some of the facts they found out, one such as about Saturn, if you put it in a bath, it floats. That's yeah. much more exciting than just saying Saturn's a light planet and doesn't yeah. have much density yeah. and stuff. It's a lot more exciting if you link it to something that, that the children understand. can relate yeah. to. Teachers sometimes feel, though, that they have to have their science books filled up for parents' well, evening or when offs to come, and, and they're worried about if they don't have enough writing and pictures. Well, that side of it. Uh, current thinking from HMI for science, for people who are coming in to inspect your science, is they do not expect to see a formal write-up oh. for science. They would like to see a mind map, a concept drawing, a um, annotated photograph, evidence of a discussion. That's mm. all good. And that's all good science. So that's, <laughs> don't worry about getting the write-up down. You just want a record that's meaningful to the child and um, helps to develop their understanding. Would you say this is a boys' topic? Did the boys have more involvement today? Um, I think back in the classroom, the boys took over the topic a bit, really. They were much more excited about it and thought of the topic as theirs and space. Wow, spaceships, boys' topic. Mm -hmm. But coming here today, the girls really became excited about it by looking at the planets and they were like, wow, cool. And you could see the enjoyment of science yeah. and space and how it came alive to them today. I love this topic because it opens up all sorts of ideas that they might not have thought about, space tourism. So we want children to be involved in those questions. Yeah. At least two of the girls from my class came away saying they want to be astronomers. Oh, so fantastic. That's great. <laughs> that's, right, then. that's great. There's a surprising number of observatories around. Every university I visit is desperate to get interaction with their university astronomy department and the general public and local schools. So I think any teacher wanting to do this should approach either their local university or their local observatory and see, can we visit? There's a huge amount, number of enthusiastic amateur astronomers who will love to talk to children. There are planetaria that you can hire and have in school for a fortnight, say and lots of places will lend telescopes and it's just knocking on a few doors and inquiring and finding out what's available. We just understand it a lot more now. Yeah, and you can see like how the planets move in a year and like in a week and everything. And then um, it's like more, you can understand it a bit more now. <laughs> and, like if you just go on a new planet, it'll be really exciting and everything. And you can see all the stars and everything, it'll be really good. It's like learning like what stuff is out there because there could be like millions more and that to us it could just be like learning one thing and there could be like loads more out there.